Today is not your usual first ride review because this motorcycle, the Triumph Speed 400, well, I have actually booked this motorcycle. The reason is simple. I just saw this motorcycle in the flesh at the launch day and the pricing was simply out of this world. I think Triumph absolutely kicked it out of the park with the pricing and positioning of the Speed 400. Now, the thing is, that was a bit of an impulsive decision for sure. But today I've got this motorcycle, I'm going to be riding it. So let's find out if that investment would be worth it. If it's not a compromise at that price point and if this is a proper entry level Triumph motorcycle. So we have got the bike today. We are going to be riding it on the track, on the road. So let's find out what's on offer on this motorcycle and if you should do book it already. The Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X are Triumph's brand new single-cylinder entry-level motorcycles that have been developed in partnership with Bajaj. Both the motorcycles share the same platform and engine, although only the Speed 400 is on sale right now. The Scrambler 400X will launch in October 2023, and that's when its prices will be announced. Anyway, that discussion is for later. For the time being, let's focus our attention on the bike that you see here, the Speed 400. And let's start with the design because that is undoubtedly one of its main USPs. The Speed 400 draws clear inspiration from Triumph's heavyweight modern classics such as the Speed Twin 900 and 1200. Except for the size and the lack of a parallel twin motor, the Speed 400's design is almost identical to its bigger brothers. Elements like the round LED headlamp, sculpted fuel tank, bar and mirrors, gold and USD forks, dual tone paint options, blacked out engine casing and fin cylinder head. Everything here comes together beautifully to make the Speed 400 a true scaled down Triumph modern classic. In terms of size and dimensions, the Speed 400 with its 1377mm of wheelbase sits somewhere between the Royal Enfield Hunter and Bajaj Domina 400. It has a curb weight of 176 kilos, which makes it around 6 kilograms heavier than the global version. Now, this gain in weight has come due to several factors. The wheels, for instance, have been reinforced for Indian road conditions and as a result are heavier. And there's a sari guard and a front number plate which is required by law in our country. Among other changes, the India spec version comes with Apollo H1 or MRF tires instead of Metzler's offered in the global version. But the good news here is that these tires are W rated. The India spec version also gets wider fenders and slightly different grab rails. The instrumentation is quite basic. You get what Triumph calls a dual format setup that features an analog speedo along with an LCD display that features a digital tack, a fuel rage indicator, a gear position indicator and other telltale lights. There's no Bluetooth connectivity or app-based navigation as we've come to expect in new motorcycles these days. Triumph's reasoning is that they wanted to keep the riding experience pure, so no distractions. Fair enough, I believe. That said, the Speed 400 is decently kitted out with electronics. You get switchable traction control, dual channel ABS, ride-by-wire throttle, a USB Type-C charging port and an inbuilt engine immobilizer. Now the big question, does it ride like a tram? Let's start with the engine. On duty here is an all-new liquid-cooled 398cc single-cylinder motor that develops 39.5 bhp and 37.5 Nm of torque. The engine is developed jointly by both the firms, but from what we were told, Bajaj played a major role here. Now let's clear some doubts first. Is it the same engine platform as the KTM Duke 390 or Domina 400? Well, no, that's not the case. Bajaj says that it's an all-new engine and apart from an identical bow size, there's nothing common between these two part trains. Coming to the performance, the engine comes to life in a refined manner and at idle it runs smooth. Till about 3000 rpm the engine doesn't have much poke on offer but once revved past that it springs to life quite enthusiastically. The mid-range is where the meat of the power band lies and between 4000 to 7000 rpm it feels its strongest. That said the torque curve is quite flat and it's spread out linearly across the rev band. Now since this is an over square motor it revs pretty quickly too. You can whack the throttle open anytime and it results in snappy acceleration. Although it never feels scary. It's more like a controlled chaos. Another great thing here is the traction control which didn't feel overly intrusive and it doesn't cut off power abruptly. Something that we experienced and hated on the bigger Dryden 660 previously. 
At the track, I was able to hit a top speed of around 165 km per hour, which is speedo indicated, and it didn't require much effort. The engine note is a bit flat at idle, but it goes deep and bubbly when accelerated hard, and I quite like that. That said, this single cylinder isn't perfect everywhere. It tends to be quite buzzy, especially between 4000 and 6000 RPM, and you'll feel the vibrations through the handlebar and pegs. Now, this gets highlighted only when you're maintaining a steady cruise or riding at a slower pace. To be frank, when I was gunning it on the track, I failed to notice the vibrations from the engine. It's only when I rode it in the real world, in the pouring rain, when I noticed it. Something that I'd also failed to notice at the track was the jerky throttle at low revs, especially below 3000 RPM. The ratios on the 6-speed gearbox felt perfect both on track and on public roads. Neither too short nor too tall, and you can pick up pace from as low as 30 km per hour in 6th gear without lugging the engine. The shifts were super smooth too, and the clutch action was feather light. As of now, there is no ARA certified fuel economy figure, but Triumph claims a real-world fuel efficiency of close to 29 km to a litre. While there are some complaints about the Speed 400's engine refinement, there is absolutely no faltering it when it comes to its ride and handling. At least I can't. We were told that Triumph paid extra attention while dealing the suspension of the Speed 400 and it definitely shows in the final result. The Speed 400 is a tremendous handler, something that's apparent right from the word go. The suspension hardware comprises 43mm upside down front forks and a 10-step preload adjustable monoshock at the back. For India, the suspension has been beefed up as in the spring rates have been revised for a stiffer setup. This results in an unimpeachable front end feel. It's rock solid. The wide handlebar gives more leverage and thanks to its short wheelbase, the Speed 400 is a quick turning motorcycle. The stability is phenomenal and the balance is such that you can do mid corner corrections and it won't upset the motorcycle at all. The grip from the Apollo H1 tires is remarkable as well. They aren't a compromise in any way, if you are wondering. The rear shock runs a relatively softer setting and it does tend to react and move around while going over bumps and undulations at high speeds. Although I thought it was something that could be fixed by adjusting the preload. Overall though, the setup is just so delectable. Out on streets, you'll definitely feel the jitters. Now of course, the suspension is a little stiff and out on the streets and you'll definitely feel the jitters from the front end on bumpy and broken. The rear shock runs a relatively softer setting and it does tend to react and move around while going over bumps and undulations at high speeds, especially during cornering. Although I thought it was something that could be fixed by adjusting the preload. Overall though, the setup is just so delectable. Now, the stiff suspension does have its downside. Out on streets, you'll definitely feel the jitters from the front end on bumpy and broken roads. But that's a trade-off I'm happy with given the confidence and control the Speed 400 provides to the rider. It's also a fairly easy and relaxed motorcycle to ride in and around town. The riding posture is fairly upright, the saddle is well padded, and with a 790mm seat height, it's quite easy to maneuver and flat foot in traffic. Another highlight is the braking system. The precision, lever progression, and stopping power from the radially mounted 4-piston front calibers is just superb. Overall, it's fair to say that the Speed 400 rides like a true blue Triumph Roadster, and personally, that's what matters the most. So what's my final verdict on the Speed 400? Well, I think it is a brilliant motorcycle. Of course, it's not perfect. It has its flaws for sure. But at this price point, I don't think you can falter this motorcycle. It has everything going for it. Whether it's the looks, whether it's the go or the design or the handling, it definitely is a motorcycle that does it all. And it has got ample power and performance for sure. Now, the only trouble that I have now is that I'm really confused between this and the Scrambler 400X because I think that motorcycle will probably be better than the Speed 400 because it has got more travel and suspension and I think that's the motorcycle that is probably suited for this engine, the kind of performance this engine has and of course our Indian roads, even though this is perfect for Indian roads, I think the Scrambler 400X might be even better. And what's more Triumph says is that it's not going to cost more than 10 15000 over the speed 400 so i'm really tempted to test that motorcycle out because i think this is a perfect formula as is but i think the scrambler 400x that will be even better so for the time being i'll keep the booking of this motorcycle but i'm also going to book the scrambler 400x because it's coming out in october 2023 and i think that's the motorcycle is the real competition to the speed 400 Otherwise, all the other competition from Royal Enfield to KTM 
to BMW to everything in between. I think Triumph has absolutely killed it with the pricing. So whether you pick the Speed 400 or the Scrambler 400X, it's going to be Triumph for Triumph.